Hello Flight Simmers, Rever here, and I want to do a training mission on getting in the air as fast as possible, getting all the caution lights off of the plane, and just how to fly around a bit and make your way to the runway without getting into all the fancy stuff. Um, I think there's a, plenty of videos up there that'll show you how to professionally fly a plane, and I respect that, and I am learning myself. I guess I'm at a point where I feel like I'm good enough at this to give a tutorial for people who are maybe just getting in a plane for the first time. This is a bit of an advanced plane, so there's probably a good amount to know, but just to show someone how to get up in the air and do their thing. So let me get started by saying I went and picked the airport that had some wins so that we can deal with that and talk about that as an issue currently oops there's a hurricane down in this area if we put on the radar we should be able to see the bands of it so we're not actually in the rain which would you know but we do have overcast skies so this will be a little bit of a challenge we're at this way cross by the way this is uh, weather underground if you can't see that this wonder map's kind of cool you can you know if you just want to pick out a place that doesn't have much wind there he goes one with no wind symbol but i wanted to pick out one with like a moderate wind each of these bars like i think this means like 15 miles per hour maybe this might mean 10 not 100 percent sure but i know the more bars you have like see this one down here i think that might mean 20 you, you can look it up on stuff and you know but just know that the more bars and the further down the bars are on the thing the higher the winds so what i did was right or right click click on this and then visit the local weather page i have it set up here for us so there we go we got a hurricane statement for this area fortunately not right this moment and so then we have tropical storm you know uh, conditions for possibly tomorrow but what i was looking for see we have a 10 mile per hour winds that's where i was thinking the one full size flag means like 10 mile per hour winds we can kind of double check that like if we go to the one that where was that one that had two or there, this one has what three bars and a dot so i think that means 35. let's click on that visit local weather page and now they only got 15 mile per hour winds what's it say up here augusta 37 so that's that's probably where that's coming from and look 35 so I'm not sure why that forecast is saying you know oh, okay look you move it over a little bit it says 26 mile per hour so so that's where the 35 is coming from so anyway that's how to read a weather map a little bit and again I don't mean to get into that too much uh, one thing I like to do too is kind of know the airport so I came over to this sky vector not going to get into all this skyways and you know if we zoom in you know it's kind of a kind of a lot you know and we're just trying to get into the air right now we're not worried about all this but i did want to see what kind of airport we were dealing with so i typed in that case which i just i don't want to say randomly but i had picked out here so if we go to this way cross which is this one you'll see that it was i'm sorry go back here way cross there it is so if I click on this, see how it says station ID K's? A lot of the weather stations of the world, or the United States anyway, are airports. So K-A-Y-S is the airport. And so I typed in K-A-Y-S here, came here. So this is kind of cool, gives you all different kinds of things. You can even call them. There's their telephone number. But it also told me we have ILS, which I don't plan on using, but we could. Um though I, maybe we will use it i don't know we'll see how we go on the first attempt to find the runway without using the ils and i'll show you my down and dirty way of doing all this stuff so all right well that's probably plenty of introduction again the point is to get up in an airplane as fast as possible so i'm in here my general rule is if i just want to get into the air what i want to do is get rid of all my caution lights so let's unpause it there we go so now we're unpaused and i got a whole bunch of caution lights and just from experience i know this plane i need to turn on the ignitions i need to come down here set the parking brake just so it doesn't take off when you're 
this this thing you don't really need, but it it prevents you from full throttling, I guess, some kind of safety. Uh, the throttles usually want to be back. Each plane's going to be a little bit different. This has condition levers because it's a prop. Like if you if you're just trying to get your Cessna in the air, you don't have to worry about condition levers. Uh, you know, it's not an adjustable prop, but I get this to start and feather, which makes a lot of sense. And that's it for getting the plane started. It took me a half hour to figure that out the first time, like with all these buttons and switches and what do I need to do? And so there we go. I'm going to switch to engine two. I don't think it really matters which one you start up first, at least not if you're being down and dirty about it. There may be some proper procedure, but I'm playing a game right now, not going for the most realism. So if you look down here, you'll see you got it right because we're, you know, the starter's rotating the engine and eventually you'll hear the, the pitch change and you'll start seeing your RPM pop up. And pretty shortly, the uh, this went back to select. We didn't, I was probably talking when it clicked, so I'll switch over to engine one. I want that. Now on this plane, we have pedo heaters which are going to give us a caution and we also have this anti-skid which will give us a caution so what I want to do is turn on the pedo heaters and this is the anti-skid right here and then I know it they say you know I want this y'all damper on let's turn off that caution light this caution light went off that light probably would have gone off soon anyway don't worry if these stay on you know, for a few minutes, it's not unusual until you turn up the engines all the way. Now, the engines are both sitting there in the green on the oil pressure. So I will take this up all the way. And again, if you don't have failures, and some planes are particular, well done. And I want to come here and turn this on and turn this on, which is the uh, flight management system that we're not going to use it too much. And then this is the radio control on this plane, so I'm going to turn that on. Again, we're not going to use it too much. I will turn this on. I don't even care what I squawk. We're just not really going to pay much attention to anybody but ourselves. You know? Now, what I will do, so that's not totally true, is I will come in here, air traffic control. They're going to put you on a runway that's got a headwind, which is kind of what you want. So, you know, tune to keys, traffic. Well, we can do the automated weather. Now, if you're just playing regular flight sim without Active Sky Next, you have to set up weather. So, since I do have, the only thing I'm really looking for here is barometric pressure. So, 3001. Yeah, this plane has two of them. I'm not sure that never had an issue with the one. I don't know. I don't know. I guess there's good reasons. Now, again, depending on your airplane, if you're just using a GPS, it's a little different, but they do have a direct to destination button on that. So one way or the other, you want to put in, I'm just going to put in this airport, okay? Yes. And it gives a little confirmation again. To, you know, if you're in a regular plane with regular Garmin GPS, it's similar. Right, let's, let's shut that guy up. And we want to select runway. So, actually, they said they're not going to give us a runway unless we do, not in this particular plane. But we have wind at 36 at 9. So we want to pick a runway that's got pretty close to the same number. So in this case, we have runway 36. I'm going to look real quick and make sure it's not some grass strip or something. Just because we are in a big plane. If you were in a... They're not listing 36. Yeah, see, it may... Let's go with 31. It's um, pretty close to the direction of the wind. and So what we'll do is just... Uh, it doesn't really matter. We're just getting in the air, but we want to select one of these, so... We'll say announce takeoff straight out. traffic, Romeo, Echo, Victor, Echo, Romeo, taking off, runway 3, 1, departing straight out. Yeah, so this one, yeah, we don't have any control at this airport, so we're going to have to kind of figure out which one is runway 36. 
Yeah, it's kind of a mess here. We got a big triangle shaped thing. Alright, so let's go around and see if we can't figure out which runway is 36. There's a building there. This plane will go backwards a little bit, but if I think if you hit Shift P in the regular, you'll get a pushback. So I'm gonna hit Services here on this plane and say push me straight back. The other thing I'm gonna do now well, that we're ready, we're we ready to push back. Uh, he's gonna be already now. Please release parking brake. So I release the parking brake, which you can also just hit the. For me, with my joystick, it's a trigger. So there we go. So we're pushing back. Parking brakes released. Now I'm gonna set the flaps in this plane to 10 degrees, and you want to make sure that it's parking indicated here as, as well as you know you change your thing. Sometimes in this plane, it doesn't always move. straight back into that building or don't really know what's behind me. I guess we could have looked, but again it's no collisions in this game, so I wonder if I can I break the chain. Alright, so a little tiny delay, so we're gonna hit end. Alright, so now we're pushed back. Control period sets the parking brake. And we got a caution, which parking is just the, the parking brake. So. so they have a whole procedure. I guess I'm not sure if you're supposed to get your pushback with the engines running. Uh, there's other things like I left the steering on. Again, down and dirty. Don't expect professionalism here. Now let me turn on this. Shrink it. I want to turn on this. I can see the gauges, but just for the sake of of uh, your guys being able to view things, that's a little funny shaped. Is it? Let's shrink it down this way a little bit. That's probably better. Okay, so what I want to do now is try to figure out which runway is 36. So we're almost facing 36 now. So. In other words, the compass heading is, you know, almost north. 36, 360 would be, so multiply that uh, runway heading by 10. Change my view just slightly. Oops. So what we're going to do is go out here and just sort of, and by the way, the Runways have two headings, 18 and 36 would be this one. So now we're facing, let's see, let's, let's do this real quick. On this plane, I, let's see what happens if we, yeah, see this plane doesn't really have, the other GPS will like kind of show you the runways, which is sort of nice. So we want to turn towards 18 because we want to go down the other end of the runway. So you know, if we look at our compass down here, 18 is going to be to the right. So let's turn to the right. That will get us heading in the right direction. It might be that runway straight ahead of us there. Just because it looks like it's about 90 degrees. You know, we're facing east. You know, if we head to the south. See, there's a sign for runway five. And it looks like there's another one straight ahead of us. We'll see. Approaching zero five. Yeah, so I have that. I don't know if that's a special program I have. I think, you know, her telling me that. So five would be a runway that's facing. So what is this one? This looks like it. I know it's hard to see, but I'm pretty sure that's a 36. Yeah, so by heading the opposite direction, you know, south, which is 180 or 18, we, we headed in this right direction at that point. 
this point you want to make sure you have your flap set you know if you want to get fancier about things you can make sure you have your lights on and all that kind of stuff three, six. now in this plane and most you know I, I want to get the I'm going to fly mostly with the autopilot again it's just getting the air as fast as possible so again we're not playing totally realistic so let me I'm going to set this to let's just go up to about 3,000 feet slow down a little bit so we don't what I do is I get out here on the runway try to get yourself facing now these runways aren't going to be necessarily at exactly 100 and, you know this on isn't going to be exactly three, necessarily six. so if I get myself facing straight down pretty close to it and then what I want to do is turn this heading knob and see how it's not a 3-6, it's actually 9. And we might be facing a little bit off to the right. So let's, let's give it a couple more. Let's do 7. And that gets you pretty close to straight. So that when we switch on the autopilot, you know, it'll it'll keep us going more or less straight down the runway. So you don't even need the runway heading. Just If you're going to take off this direction, set that blue blue line here you know, to kind of straight ahead, straight down the runway. All right, so we have our altitude. In this plane, we need to hit heading, altitude select, and then I like to come up here to IAS, and then in this, this is this particular, a lot of planes don't have an indicated airspeed thing, and you would just set your VS, which is your vertical speed. IAS stands for indicated airspeed. So we want, knowing this plane well enough, we're just gonna set it to like 205. See on here, 205. Three, so once six, we hit the autopilot, on it three, will six. decrease how fast we're going up until our speed matches versus trying to hold a particular vertical speed. Look, there goes another little plane ahead of us. So if we want to be, uh, yeah, we're going to basically depart north so we can announce that we're taking off. And I'm not worried about that at all. So we've got our flap set, and I can see down here the indication is correct. This thing is off. It's annoying because I sometimes forget to turn that off. Um, there it goes. We don't have any caution lights. And set, you know, one thing I'd recommend is set your view to the same location each time. What I do is I go to the center position. Like you'll see, it just sort of hesitates there until you bring the mouse further. So I get it back to what's the center position, and then I, I bring it to it's pretty close to this bar right here. It doesn't matter too much, but you know one issue on with the flight sim three, versus real life is just runway, picking a point. Three, you know, getting six. used to looking through this window at the same general direction. You know, like so that you're not. Trust me, if if, if this thing is off to the side, it becomes incredibly harder to control the plane unless you get used to it off to the side like that. I guess. So this gives you like a good frame of reference every time. All right, so generally what you do in flying is stop at the end of the runway. You can see I have my brakes held on. And then on it's just runway, a good habit. Three, six, Ramp your engines all runway, the way up. Three, and then six, you'll see it starts going slowly, but I still have the brakes on there. When I get the full thrust, let go on the brakes. Now I'm going to need to apply rudder. You mostly use your rudder on the runway to, to control your, you know, left and right. And then this plane, when I get up to about 110, I can pull up, but each plane will be different. This is a fairly short runway for this plane, but we're in good shape. Pull back, and you go up, and now you're flying. So now you don't want to pull up too hard. You kind of want to get some airspeed going. And then once we do, I'm going to turn on the autopilot. So it'll start taking over and turn us to that heading and, and start doing to this eye up. IAS in this case, or your plane will start doing that. Pick up your landing gear if you have it, and then usually I just wait till the landing gear's up, and then I lower my f or pull the flaps up to the zero position. And there we go, we're in the air. So pretty down and dirty. Now, if you notice, we also one of the reasons I do this uh, direct to destination, and you can set it in at any time is I want to go back and fly back to the same airport and the same runway. So I'll show you how you can just, you know, again, down and dirty, navigate back, and maybe even line up with the airport. And this is 
you know, mostly learn, but you'll see when they... Well, we got a pretty strong wind, so this plane's nice too because it gives you an airspeed. What you'll notice is, see this little pink dot? That's my actual course, so even though I'm facing... You know, this is the direction that we're heading, is 05, 06, 07. You can see we got some turbulence here, which, we, which I expected, these issues. And we're now getting to altitude, so which is not very high. So unfortunately, we may just be in the clouds here. Huh? Which is good. It shows you you can do this stuff, you know, without looking. And, and in some ways, you know, you want to be more aware of where you're at in this respect. So... What I want to do now is turn, and I, you know, let me slow down some more with this plane. It's a pretty fast plane compared to some, and I don't want to get over my, you know, I don't want to get into that red bar. So it looks like it's still climbing, so I'll back off. Not climbing, the, the speed is increasing. We're not in a huge hurry, so I'll bring that down. So there you go. So that's not, doesn't, it's kind of going up and down, but that's mostly because of the wind, I think. So now what I want to do is I want to take my heading bug and I want to put it so that we fly back the way we came. And we got a 30 mile per hour crosswind here. We might be better off landing on that runway 5. I mean the wind's coming from this direction. So let's do that. We're going to go back to the airport now. Not really knowing where what we're doing. We're not following air traffic control. We're just we're going to turn this guy, turn this heading bug all the way around. What I'm going to do is turn it until it's, you know, almost heading back to the airport. Maybe not quite. So see how we're turning there? And what that'll do is it'll put us, when we come back, we're going to fly about 20 miles past the airport this way. You could get away with a lot less, but it doesn't really hurt to come in from, you know, kind of straight onto the runway, especially if you're just learning. But what that'll also do is put it out this way so we have some room to turn. You know, if you, if you go straight back on the runway, you know, you, you don't end up with quite as much. You, you're going to turn when you get down here, and you're not going to be lined up with the runway. Traffic. So, Traffic. Yeah, this plane has a radar, so they're saying there's a plane. I'd like to know what that plus 21 Defense. means. Crossing. Defense. And we're, we're turning. How's that sound, buddy? And he's still a little ways off. Yeah, I'm not sure what the plus 22... I think that means he's up above us, maybe. There he is. Yeah, he is pretty darn close. 35. See, it doesn't seem to... Now it's blue, so that means we're not conflicting. But I'm, again, I'm, maybe that's the distance? I don't really know. All right, well, anyway, we're completing our turn here. So this should be challenging with this wind and the clouds and all of that stuff. So we can't see, you know, where we're going. Hopefully we'll pop out of the clouds and thank goodness for GPS, right? So it looks like to me we're kind of heading a little bit further this way. And the fact that we're going to come in on, you know, another runway. Oops, what we need to do. Let's come over here. And I do have, one of the reasons I looked up that information earlier is I could see the heading of the runway that we're going to land at, the exact, you know, the exact heading. And this one's saying that it's uh, runway, oh, that's runway one, runway five, which is fairly long, is going to be at 47. So see how they don't quite match up. So we're going to take this and we're going to put it at 47. Yeah. So now what that does for us is we know that the air, the runway is heading in this direction. So we're kind of flying a little bit more parallel to it, or perpendicular to it than I want to. So let's turn the heading. Because so we should be plenty off to the right now. So we're going to try to fly parallel to it at that point. So we're just going to line that blue bar up. You know, we're all, you know, we're going to kind of just head right back in the direction of the runway. Like I said, we know that the runway is off to our right, so we're to the left of the runway right now. Which makes sense, because here we are flying, you know, we're going to the left of the airport. And we are turning, so... We'll... And... Let's turn a little bit more. We have 
have 31 mile per hour wind behind us, which is kind of good because when we're run, lined up with that runway, we want to land into the wind. So. Okay, see, look, so there's somebody else taking off a runway five. And we're doing a pretty good speed. One thing with, you know, flying, you want to keep a good eye on the speed. Alright, see, so I can tell from this that we're actually... Now we're heading closer to the runway because we're... Because this needle is this way, so we're... We're a little bit too far right, so let's pull it back to the left. Just so that we're, you know, and on this plane you can see exactly. Every plane's a little bit different, but these concepts are all the same. I might even repeat this with a Cessna, you know, so there we go. So now if anything, we're heading off to the right, or I'm sorry, to the left of the runway again. Now again, keep in mind that this little pink dot is the actual direction we're heading. So as the wind is blowing us slightly towards the, you know, blowing us further right than we're actually heading in this case. Alright, well let me fast forward a bit so we get to about 20 miles away in that ballpark. And if we look here, we're... And see, look, it's even saying that we're the runway is, you know, the airport is to our, behind us and to the left a little bit. Yep, so we can probably, it probably doesn't matter too much. We'll just, uh, we'll just head at this for a few minutes. Hello, Julia. Few seconds. Sierra, traffic, Cessna, November 08181, taking off runway 10, departure to the south. All right, so we're buzzing right along. We're at sixteen miles. Let's, uh, This is a little bit crazy weather. Now one thing to say is we're doing this IFR and there's a darn good chance in real life they wouldn't let you. <laughs> you know, this is this is kind of too crazy kind of thing. You know, but hey, you may find yourself flying someplace and the weather takes you. Look at our you know, indication is just bouncing all over the place. And we are flying through the edge of a hurricane. Kind of thing. Oh, 28 miles. Let's, let's slow down. All right, which is fine. You know, don't hesitate to go a little further out. If you cut it close, you know, you can do it. You just got to know what you're doing that much better. So, all right, so what we want to do now is I want to turn. I think the runway, you know, it's looking like it's to our left a little bit. So if we look up here, maybe just straight behind us even, depending on how the wind blows us. So what I want to do is I want to turn this plane to, and again, I'm going to go to the left. So let's turn to the left till I'm perpendicular to the runway. So I'm going to turn to about, what's that, 13 or three, 100, 135. So let's turn to the left, 135. like just about a 90 degree angle and you can see here this this red bar represents a 90 degree angle to this so you know again it doesn't have to be that exact but what I want to do now is at, let's get all the way turned I want to fly until this line is 90 degrees off of this plane so when that's hitting about the five there 
I need to be 90 degrees this way first. It means I'm pretty darn close to lined up with the runway. Now look what's happening here. We're just blowing so much. This is actually the direction we're traveling. But again, and for the purposes of this, you know, we want to we want to know that this is 90 degrees to the airplane. So what that means is we're flying towards this runway and then we're going to make a left hand turn and hopefully come right out at the, the exact course. Now, another thing we probably want to do is let's go down and hopefully we can pop out of these clouds. So let's just go down to 2000. On this plane I hit the altitude, I hit the vertical speed, and then I'm going to do like minus 1000. Sort of depends on the plane. I'm going to hit altitude select in this plane. Now, I'd want to back off on my throttles because, well, because you don't want to go too fast. We'll probably even start, well, we're still kind of a distance away, 35 miles. So we got plenty of time to adjust. I mean, really, 20 miles would be plenty. You know, and if you notice, now the thing is, this is behind us. So the runway is actually behind us. So what I think I want to do is actually spin around and go the opposite way. So we're going to turn this until it's at 3... probably should have turned the other direction, but... we're going to turn this until we get to 3... what? 20? 315? And the reason I say we should have turned the other way is because we're going to go further turn out this way, and you'll see this will increase instead of decreasing. We're, you know, if you were close to the airport, you'd probably want to turn away from it. So this is, you know, how I'm going to get more or less lined up with the runway using this. A lot of planes have the GPS. If you don't, you're going to have to do instrument and DME and, and all this other kind of stuff, which... I don't know. Pick a plane that's got a GPS in it. <laughs> At least to get started. Yeah, see how now we're like 39 miles away? So kind of, you know, kind of too far away. I mean, you're not too far away to line up. Now, this is not an appro appropriate, you know, this is not what you would do in a real situation or you know you probably well with this IFR now if you look can we see any you can't see anything on the ground so once we get a little closer we can try to drop down now if you're like me and you have active sky next which is giving us this you know relatively accurate weather we can go to the closest station and just check overcast at 1200 feet so right now this plane has a ground sensor so we're at 1800 feet I'm kind of slowing down a bit more than I might want to all right so now see how we're we're pacing perpendicular more or less we probably go a little bit further you know so we're basically perpendicular so see how this this bar is ahead of us as far as the airport, there's another airplane close to us. Traffic. Traffic. Descend. Crossing. Descend. Yeah, where is he? He's, he's not going to miss us by much. See, so they're telling us to descend, so the green would be if we descended. Clear of conflict. And I, I could kind of tell we'd be clear of the conflict. I'm sure we'd get in trouble, you know, risking somebody's plane if we're pilots, but. Alright, so this isn't quite perpendicular. And you want to maybe turn a little bit before it's perpendicular, but there would be like a mark for 90 degrees right there. The other thing we could do, just because we're so far out, usually I do this, let's turn it this way. So there's the airport, in other words. I want to get that perpendicular. So most of the, well, the GPS is you can change the range. So 
you'll notice we're flying at like three, you know, what's our heading here? 319, you know, is the heading we're trying to keep, but we're actually traveling at like 310, so it's blowing us off course by like 9 or 10 degrees. Or 8 or 9 degrees, anyway. going kind of slow. We can probably speed up a bit, especially being so far away. So now we're getting pretty close to perpendicular. So I'm going to turn. And I'm going to turn so that we're our blue line is pretty much going right down the, you know, right to the airport. Um, so we're right, you know, the blue line and the pink line are matching now. fast forward once we make this turn we'll, we'll fast forward a bit get a little bit closer so now what we want to do is once we're heading right towards the airport we are going to hope that this line lines up with the direction that we're you know like that means we're lined up straight straight with the runway see how we're awful close Let's see what happens as we some of its the winds pushing us a little bit over let's let the plane settle out now keeping in mind that the winds gonna be pushing us we probably want to get that pink line lined up with the runway so we're gonna, we're gonna turn a little bit more so that, you know so that this pink line gets lined up right straight with this line Now we're heading right straight towards the airport and see how this this line is slightly to the to the left well that's okay in this case because again keep in mind the plane's going to keep getting pushed a little bit to the left now this is saying the wind straight ahead of us so see what happened there when the wind got straight ahead we want to turn back turn that blue line you know straight ahead now that should put the wind at a little bit of an angle maybe yeah, see how it turns the wind just a little bit. And how far away are we? Alright, let's get closer. Let's get down to about 20 miles. So I just hit R and then plus plus. So we're heading right straight for the airport. See how the runway is pretty close to lined up? You know, at some point you have to get down low enough to actually see the runway if you're going to do VFR, which means visual flight rules. So we'll get this down to about 20, and then just for the sake of the video and Caution. terrain, Caution. terrain, terrain. And there's no terrain. I'm not sure. I guess it's just the wind. See, with all this bouncing around that we're doing. So thank goodness we have the autopilot. Otherwise, we'd be bouncing all over the place. Well, we are bouncing all over the place. This is a, a lose your lunch flight if you're really in an airplane. So this should be getting us, you know, relatively close. So this guy's doing touch and goes in this weather. For him. Charlie, whiskey, Victor, traffic, Mooney, November 7513, Charlie, taking off runway 27. Different airport, by the way. Alright, so we're down to about 19. So let's see, about slowing back down to regular speed. And then, because they said 1,200 feet, what I want to do is let's set our altimeter to 1,200 feet. Which, again, keeping in mind that that's the altitude above sea level, not not necessarily the... So we'll, we'll go down kind of slowly for this plane, 1,000 feet. Hit altitude select. And let's start Caution. slowing down. Terrain. Caution. Terrain. And it's given us that warning because we are flying towards the ground, which is kind of our intention. So we're getting a little bit low for... But we're still going to be 1,000 or 1,200 feet up. So you can see we've done all of this without, you know, seeing where the airport is. We're going to 
kind of ignore him. Let's back off on the throttles to slow down a bit. Now, because of all this wind and weather, we're going to... There you go, see? So now on this plane, I can come in here and hit altitude. And, you know, vertical speed. So we're going to hold this altitude, which is... What is it? Uh, 1260, so let's set this to 1200, altitude, select, vertical speed, we'll just go down a tiny bit, and that should let the plane get altitude select again. So we should have a runway somewhere up ahead of us here. If you look, it should be a little bit off to the right, but more or less just straight ahead. And Definitely want to slow down. We're only 12 miles away, and I'm not really seeing it yet out here. So I want to make a little bit of an adjustment to the right. 1,000. And just because of the weather and everything else, you can hold off. We'll put 5 degrees flaps. That'll help slow us down. Why are you beeping at me? Put the gear down. Alright, so now the plane is trying to hold our altitude, but it can't. And I can't see this runway. Is that it up ahead? Yeah, see, we're, we've got a bad position here. Let's put some more flaps on. Power. We're giving it a lot of power to keep our speed. And I still can't see this runway. There we go. So we don't want to be that nose up in this plane. Some planes you do. There we go. See them right ahead there? Pretty sure this is the runways. And we can't quite see the direction of the runway yet. Echo Sierra traffic, mall, November 7, 8312. It's on base, runway 10. Could just be buildings. Let's turn the let's turn this down. Yeah, it should be straight straight ahead of us. That, that could well be it. Now we're pretty darn low compared to what you would normally fly in at, so we should see lights. Looks like it's saying that we're above the glide slope, but I don't think that could be true. Yeah, see how we're losing speed here again? So let's get these throttles back up. So I could see that I could tell that because the nose is starting to pitch up because the autopilot's trying to hold the the altitude. And it's losing speed because we don't have enough throttle. Yeah, it's for the life of me, I can't really see for sure that that's the runway. And it should be, yeah, just ever so slightly to the right, so I'm pretty sure that's it. I just can't really tell if we're lined up or not. Alright, so we've kind of got too much speed now, so I'll back off again a bit. Bring the nose. So just by yeah. So I want to turn off the autopilot and start heading for this, whatever it is. Just turn a little bit. So if you notice, as we're turning, we should be lining up with that runway, the course there. So see how that sort of worked out. What I really want to see though is my we're heading down. I don't want to get too low. Certainly not before I see the runway. I mean, we're usually looking for some red lights. So we're only five miles away. It's looking like the airport's a little bit to our right.
I, for the life of me, don't see runway lights. We may not have runway lights, which would be kind of strange. We're only four miles out. I'm going to have to increase the speed. Or the, I'm going to pull up a little bit. See, that's... Is that the runway? I don't see a runway. Oh, is that it over this way, I think? Yeah, I think I see it now. And there's no runway lights on this runway. So we're going to just... What I'm looking at, by the way, is this right here. So I need to get over to the right to get lined up with that. 500. Knock the throttles back a tiny bit. Zero, five. Yeah, see, so there's no, on this one, there's no run, you know, the landing lights that tell you that you're high or low. There we go. So it looks like I'm lined up with that runway, which is looking awful tiny, isn't it? <laughs> It'll get bigger as we get closer, but it's still a little runway. I don't even know if it's a big enough runway for us to land on. And take a look at our wind. They're pretty much headwinds at 13. So I'm just trying to get lined up, Plus, keep okay. an eye on your speed, you know, like, ooh, blowing off to the right, or to the left. Let's turn. So we're only, we're coming in real low, shallow. Yeah, All right. Minimums. Minimums. Too low. Flaps. I know. So if we pull up too much, we want to increase the too throttle. Low. Flaps. Oops, let's, yeah, we can go to full flap so that I'll kind of mess us up while we're at this point. Probably should have done that sooner. Yeah, see how all of a sudden we bounced up there? I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, as you get closer. Oh, way too hard. Oof. Throttles back. Yeah, we, we hit the runway, but we really did it hard. I'm sure we would have hurt the plane in real life. Probably could have gone around if you, you know, I don't like to go around because. Uh, 2,000 feet remaining. Well, I hope that's helpful. You know, that's sort of getting up in the air and flying around and sort of finding your way back to the airport was the biggest part. Landing, don't be disappointed if you land hard like that. I think it's pretty normal. You know. I'll turn these engines off so it's a little quieter. And I don't think you just want to throw them down to off like that. There's a whole procedure. But there we go. So you can see I just got up in the air. I flew around. You know, I found my position to K's here. And, you know, got perpendicular to the runway and then lined it up on this. And that got us close enough. Dropped below the clouds. Um, and that's how I did a VFR flight without, you know, really even paying attention to this guy or having him line me up. And, and you'll see that what I did is, is kind of how they bring you in if you do the VFR th or the IFR thing. So, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye-bye.